Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 5, Episode 5. This is an interesting episode, but, um, but we'll talk about that. Let's get started. And if you would consider, please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe and maybe tell a friend to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Anyway, here we go. Let's get started. So, um, so first we look at the artists with their submission pieces, which is a self-portrait. This is a very interesting piece. He likes to do two paintings at the same time, and we'll see that later as well. This is, this is his thing, which... I'm aware of here. I wasn't, oh, here we go. We're able to get almost the whole painting in here. Stor nice storytelling. Um, wow, that's a beautiful piece, isn't it? This is looking like it could be a really good episode. So this is our chance to see who these artists are and how they like to represent themselves or how they see themselves or maybe a clever way of presenting their image in a new way. This, this in particular delights me just because it's, it's just a little gem of a painting and he's cradling it like a baby. Um, that was smart to dress in the, the headdress that's reflected in the picture as well. Uh, I'm, sh I'm sure all this is, is well planned and, and done. And uh, oh wow, look at that. Wow, holy smokes. Oh boy. Okay. Um, sorry, match.com. No, 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 not, not for the guy, the painting. <laughs> love the painting. Sorry. Uh, that's a watercolor. Okay, we have a watercolorist in the room. You know I'm biased toward that, so I'm going to be watching that. And, oh, again, interesting storytelling here. Passing show, like a ventriloquist dummy. Well, we haven't seen that device used before. Now we'll get started with the actual program. The first one up is John Cooper Clark. He's our celebrity model. He is a performance poet. And if he doesn't look like a performance poet, I don't know who does. I almost want to say channel Patty Smith, because <laughs> you could be Siamese twins. After four hours, the easels get turned around and we get a chance to see what the artists did and the judges will begin to, or no, not the judges. The judges don't look here, but um, what will happen is that John Cooper Clark will decide which one of these paintings he wants to take home, which is a real honor. This is a close-up of the first one that we have to look at. Um, it, it has a quiet kind of energy, doesn't it? Um, almost, what I'm feeling from this painter is, is as if the uh, figure is emerging from the canvas as opposed to the canvas and having paint applied to it. And the, I'm, I'm feeling that vibe and, and kind of liking it. But this is what he does. He does these two images together is his thing. I also wanted to stick in a, a David Shavlino reference simply because it shows again this idea of lost and found edges and kind of a, like this uh, Im mirage almost kind of thing which that which that painter was doing. Now here's the watercolor which I'm going to be biased toward because um, you know watercolor is my life. Uh, that's a beautiful job and I know how hard it is to to do that. You know it, it's Handling water is, try to, try to handle water on a spoon when you're eating soup. That's, that's one thing, but getting it to go where you want it to go on a piece of paper, I'm not saying, you know, it's hard, therefore it should be admired. I'm just saying it takes such a long time to be able to have control over it that on top of that you have, you have all this, um, all this painting that you have to do. I, I think this is beautifully done. I don't think it's overworked in any way. I think it honors watercolor by showing, um, really showing what watercolor will, can do, that it is almost a spontaneous kind of method and that uh, there's there's real freedom in letting the water kind of go where it, where it wants to go while you guide it without it being aware of that process. This was This caught my eye right away when it got turned around because probably because of that yellow area, which which was there in real life, but I think it, it, it made an important design element here for this particular artist. It really makes the figure pop forward in space. Here's a detail of the hand. And I know in the past I've been critical about, you know, maybe some, some hands that have been less uh, resolved than this one, but but this fits his style of painting. So this is this is see, yeah, from far away, 
that's, that's looking solid and and certainly like the sitter. I I think that's a great job. But um, but I like them all. And so John Cooper Clark is going to pick one to take home. And um, I'm curious to see which one he's going to pick. I, I think it's going to be this one, but, but we're about to find out. Again, this is an honor and has nothing to do with the final judging in terms of the program. Oh, no, he picked the double portrait. Interesting. And yet it kind of makes sense, you know, with a poet in, in a way. Kind of maybe he deals with obscure obscurity of language and, and metaphor and all that. So maybe that, that fits him. Okay, Fern Cotton is the next one up. She's a broadcaster and an author. I love the name Fern. <laughs> if I ever, well, I'm too old now, but if I ever had a child again, I think I, I would entertain that name. <laughs> but um, Anyway, my, maybe it's the option for my next dog. Uh, not to insult her at all, I just like the name. So now imagine easels being turned around here because I did not find an image of the easels turned around. Uh, so here we go. First one up. Um, I don't have a whole lot to say about this one. It's, it's um, I don't know, are you going to remember this in five minutes? Uh, I, I kind of doubt it. There's just, just nothing that's, uh, there's nothing to criticize and also nothing to generally praise. But let's see when we turn back, if I mean when we pull back, if there's something more to be observant of. Oh no, we went in. Oh, oh you know how I feel about eyelashes. Oof. You know, oh, I really don't like, you know, if you're going to do ultra-realism, then do ultra-realism. Otherwise, what are eyelashes doing there? Oh, this one. Oh, okay. Well, this is my own bias. I, I, I have some issues with the proportion and, and the drawing ability here. And it does not have a likeness to her. And then beyond that, I'm not, it doesn't look like the person has a good handle on the medium. I'm not... Do you feel like there's a, any control going on here? Maybe that's the point, but but it, it feels a little bit chaotic. To, oh, now when we pull back, yeah, it feels even more chaotic to me. Um, that would be a hard painting for me to have in my house because there's so many things that I want to go in and fix or adjust. So that's just a personal preference. Oh, hello. Ooh, boy. Well, this is the type of painting that I really love, where somebody uses color to establish their value shapes and does not use white in order to lighten their colors, but instead makes their mixes so that the brightness of color is maintained and then applies, you know, the bright, brighter and lighter color to the bright and light areas. See, look at that. Yeah, see the bright and light happening in the eyes. And then, um, and then for the darker kind of values that are really mid-tones in this case, not, not around the eyes. The darker values are definitely around the eyes, but then, but they've used color for mid-tones in some sort of surreal, uh, not some sort of green in the eyebrow. I'm not sure, but, but boy, there's a lot of good color mixing going on here. Um, I also think it has a likeness to the sitter. And they incorporated the background, so it doesn't look like she's being, you know, been cut out of a piece of paper or that her portrait was done somewhere else and then glued on. Um, I like the integration of that a whole lot. Uh, Fern's going to pick one to take home. That's the one I would pick. What's she going to pick? Oh, she did pick that one. Oh, it's the guy whose portrait I love so much that earlier I said um, you might have thought I was a dream. he was a dreamboat, but it was his painting, I swear. <laughs> it was his painting. Next up is Hayden Gwynn. She is a British actress of stage and screen. Uh, let's see what happens here. I... I <laughs> She was very tall and thin, and I only say that because um, sometimes it's interesting to be able to look at their characteristics just as they walk out onto the stage. You know, you, that's your first impression of getting an idea of who you're going to paint and, and who they are and how they present themselves in the world. So four hours in, the artists turn their easels around, and we get our very first glimpse of what's going to happen. All right, this looks... Oh boy, this, this does not look promising to me. I was really hoping it would look promising, but this particular bunch looks a little disappointing for me. Okay, here's the first one up. Oh, he was the one who was holding the little gem of a painting when we first looked at the self-portrait he brought in. And he scaled up here and working on a bigger size. When you scale up, it is a whole different game in terms of making your mixes and in terms of... You, you would think it's the same, but, it, but it's actually not. 
you, you really have to practice at a larger size, which, which I'm sure he does. I suspect he probably paints in this size somewhat regularly, but given the time constraints, I think that probably didn't work well in his favor. It's, um, uh, oh gosh, I would have loved to see what would have happened if he had worked in a smaller uh, format. Oh, this one? Oh, there's not a lot I can say about this one. It's it's um, it's pretty simple and basic. And I, I do not have a problem with simple and basic. I, I've made a few videos about, you know, some simple and basic famous painters that, that I adore. But that's within a body of work where they're telling a story. And I know we didn't have an opportunity to tell a story here, but you can tell a story just with some design elements that you might incorporate into the background. And I don't mean something like throwing in a flower or, or some kind of crazy paisley background or something, but just with some simple, basic, solid shapes. Like I'm dying to make that one of those shapes a, a, a dark blue and that would pull the figure into the space. Oh, anyway, we're on to the next one. Um, yeah, well, uh, this is a, mm, this one, my first impression of this one is, um, just a great job. You know, it's a really, really great job. It's so hard because we've seen so many great painters and this is, this is a, this is a nice one. Feels a little unfinished, but I'm not sure why. Okay, let's come in. Yeah, that's a nice job. Nice job. I see some bright orange. I see some red. There's some there's some really intense hue going on there. There's a vibrancy there. All right, Hayden's going to pick one, and let's see which one they pick. I'm going to try to not say all right. I know I say that a lot in these recaps. I'm working on it. It's, it's all a work in progress. Hayden picks one. Oh, it's this one. Okay, great. So those are the ones that have been honored by being chosen. Now we get on to the actual judging of the program. Three of the artists will be selected for the final judging. So only three artists can go on. So let's see who they pick. Well, the first one they pick is this sort of Enigma guy. And um, I'm happy about that. I'd like to see more of his work. It's, it's an interesting... It's an interesting way of working. I'd like to know more about him and more about why he, he makes these kind of choices. This one, you know, this is just the kind of painting that I like to do, and so it's, it's, it's going to speak to me every single time. Um, it's, it's certainly similar to a lot of paintings that we've seen on this program, so they might have a bias against that. Oh, this one, yeah, you see, I really liked, I, this one hit me as impactful. That's what I'll say about it, really impactful. So, now that we've looked at the three artists' pictures that win this particular episode, now we get to see their self-portrait, which they had unlimited time to do, next to the piece that they did in the four hours today. So we get to see a little bit of length and breadth of what the artist can do. Um, so we can see that this is the device that this artist uses on a regular basis very consistent in terms of his work and presentation. Not a huge difference, really, given the four hours. So he looks he looks like a solid painter. On to the next one. Oh, that's, that's interesting. I didn't realize that this was uh, the fellow who had made that ventriloquist picture. Um, I would not have connected those two as being the same artists. Um, he's certainly capable of the final task of the commission. We could see great detail in the painting that he had a lot of time to do, and I really enjoy the design and, and the execution of the painting that he did today. And our last finalist, oh, oh, gee, what a surprise. It's, it's, um, it's the fellow who, that I called a dreamboat. <laughs> Again, I wasn't calling him a dreamboat. His painting. I love that painting. I love that painting. Oh my gosh. All right, I have to prepare myself because I'm going to be crushed if that painting doesn't win. It's got all the things that I that I love. Color value swap outs, accuracy and in drawing, incorporating, mixing for color, massing for value, limited strokes, only giving as much information as you need. Well, I'm talking about his self-portrait. I'm really, oh gosh, they're going to judge on what he did today. Okay, that's fair. Um, well, that's what makes the program interesting. So, we are going to see who wins the program. 
And like I said, only one of the three that they chose is going to go on. The winner is... Dun, 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 dun. Oh! So it's the Enigma guy. Well, that's going to be interesting. We're certainly going to remember him when it gets to be the finals and, and he <laughs> continues to do this two-portrait-in-a-row thing. So that'll stick in my mind. Good job. So that's the end of this episode. We go on to the next episode where I will be incorporating some new features where I'll be incorporating some images that show some of the concepts that I kind of talk about. Because sometimes it's hard to talk about art. It's better if you can give a point and then show an illustration. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, and mix for color. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.